The Ultimate Fighter is the UFC's reality TV show. Matt Saren is annoying ass coaching. Yeah! There you go, George! You're picking him apart! Which brings some of the most talented fighters from around the world under one roof and makes them compete in a single elimination bracket, with the winner generally taking home a six-figure UFC contract. Now, if you put multiple prize fighters in a place where it's every person for themselves, tempers are bound to get high and crazy things are guaranteed to happen. Since its inception in 2005, Tough has produced a number of crazy and memorable moments and personalities. They all turn into little bitches like the game, ha ha ha, it was a joke. You know, that shit ain't funny to me. Including those who changed the game completely and went on to either win championships or rise to the heights of stardom. Welcome back to MMA Uncovered, and today we'll be talking about the craziest and most memorable personalities from MMA fans' favorite show, The Ultimate Fighter. First on the list, Josh Koscheck. Josh Koscheck has been one of the biggest heels in mixed martial arts history since The Ultimate Fighter Season 1, where he bullied Chris Lieben throughout, most notably spraying him with a hose as he slept outside after a war of words with Bobby Southworth. Unlike some of the fighters that have appeared on the reality TV show since its inception, Koscheck's antics and villainous tactics were somewhat premeditated. He used it to garner attention and get under the skin of people for one reason or another. For fight fans who don't know much about him or haven't watched a whole lot of old school UFC. It was pretty much what Colby Covington is today. In Dana White's words, Koscheck wasn't necessarily a bad guy, but a complete dick nonetheless. Josh was a troublemaker per se, which is why he got his chance to compete in the UFC despite being eliminated from the middleweight tournament by Diego Sanchez. And years later, he would return to Tough as a coach opposite to George St. Pierre. For as long as the season lasted, Koscheck used his childish tricks to get under George St. Pierre's skin. For example, hiding his flip flops from him in the gym and distracting his search for the missing footwear with unnecessary chatter. I've been bullied at, at school, you know, uh, all my life, you know, growing up. It's not something new. I'm used to deal with things like that, you know. A lot of people, they take my kindness for weakness. Moreover, he resorted to sexual innuendos, telling GSP that he'd quit MMA altogether if he French kissed him, and even went as far as trying to unpants GSP on national television. If we can pull this out, man. I'm going to run over there and probably just, uh, you know, get in George's face and blah, motorboat his ass. <laughs> Yikes. GSP wouldn't respond to his antics, but the welterweight GOAT's entourage, medic Brad Tate, wasn't as cool, however. And when provoked by Koscheck, who called him a male nurse, Tate got into a heated exchange with the UFC veteran and things quickly got physical. Luckily, they were separated before things got out of hand. Number 8. Diego Sanchez Putting together a tough compilation and not mentioning Diego Sanchez, that's impossible, particularly because he's the first ever tough winner. But more so, Sanchez had a very eventful first season of The Ultimate Fighter. In the house, Sanchez produced some iconic moments, like doing his weird yoga techniques with baby oil poured all over his body. He even got into a war of words with Stefan Bonner over asparagus. Apparently, Sanchez ate the asparagus heads and left the stalks in the fridge, something that Bonner didn't like. I appreciate you know what asparagus really is, and Inside the cage is where the UFC legend did most of his talking. During the tournament, he secured four victories with three finishes and beat Kenny Florian to win the middleweight tournament. Diego made his return to the Ultimate Fighter Season 2 finale to face Nick Diaz in a highly anticipated welterweight fight. There was more than a hint of bad blood between the two, and they gave the MMA world a fight to remember. Both fighters had their moments, but Sanchez was handed the victory by a comfortable unanimous decision. Decision. Although, the fight was a lot tighter than what the scorecards would indicate. Number 7. Michael Bisping Michael Bisping is easily one of the greatest fighters to emerge from the Ultimate Fighter ranks, and he was quite literally one of the stars of Season 3, along with Matt Hamill. Bisping had quite a lot of moments in the house, like teaming up with a housemate to try and shave off the eyebrows of another. Don't shave my head! I won't! I promise, I'm not gonna shave your head. Those... Ah! But what truly set the tone for the season was his intense training sessions and rivalry with Matt Hamill the only man to beat the consensus GOAT, John Jones. The rivalry between Bisping and Hamill was passive-aggressive, despite the fact that they were teammates. Hamill was being backed to win the whole thing by many, and that didn't sit well with Bisping, who wanted to prove to the world that he was the best in his division. After moving past the elimination phase, Bisping and Hamill were set to meet in the semi-final and put their rivalry to bed once and for all. But 
the American, unfortunately, had to pull out from the tournament due to an injury. Bisping submitted late replacement Rose Poynton in the semifinals, and TKO'd Josh Haynes in the finals to win the light heavyweight tournament. The Count would eventually face and defeat Hamill at UFC 75, before returning to Tough as a coach on two different occasions, opposite Dan Henderson and Jason Mayhem Miller at Tough 14, the highlight of which was Bisping falling off the air hockey table while jumping in celebration after having won the coach's challenge. <laughs> Number 6. Tony Ferguson Joe Rogan calls Tony Ferguson a weird guy, Habib Nurmagomedov thinks he's stupid, and the rest of the MMA aficionados believe he's one of the most electrifying fighters to have ever graced the UFC octagon, and in truth, None are wrong. Ferguson started attracting eyeballs when he competed in the Ultimate Fighter Season 13 welterweight tournament, when he celebrated his victory against Chuck O'Neill in the semifinals a bit too wildly. Ferguson got drunk and messed around with his housemates. In an attempt to cool him off, Charlie Raider poured water onto his head, and El Kukui didn't appreciate it much. Within a split second, the former UFC interim lightweight champion tackled Raider through the table before proceeding to verbally berate him for not having custody of his son. It was a bit of a low blow, to be fair. And and even Ferguson expressed regret about getting a bit too personal with Raider. But still, fans got to see a glimpse of Tony's merciless boogeyman persona that would continue its reign of terror in the UFC for years to come. Number 5. Nate Diaz The pride of Stockton, Nate Diaz is the most recognizable name to come out of the Ultimate Fighter. He's an absolute badass fighter who has the most authentic persona in the game. He always speaks his mind, doesn't take crap from anyone, and as serious as he may seem, he does have a knack for playing pranks on his contemporaries. At the Ultimate Fighter Season 5, Nate Diaz and Cole Miller entertained MMA fans with their hilarious prank wars. The first move was made by Diaz, who punched Miller in his sleep. Miller exacted revenge by spraying silly string all over the Stockton native's bed, which led to the two wrestling and throwing each other's beds into the swimming pool. The two ultimately buried the hatchet, or at least Miller did, because Diaz waited until Miller fell asleep again one night and splashed ice-cold water on him, followed by white powder. While he was pretty chill in the house, Diaz absolutely steamrolled every everybody and secured four consecutive submissions to win the lightweight tournament and make it to the UFC, where he became one of the biggest combat sports stars within years. Number 4. Junie Browning In recent years, many MMA fighters have started to play the maniac gimmick to draw attention to their fights, but Junie Browning's maniac persona was anything but. Browning was a loose cannon through and through, and anything he did on The Ultimate Fighter Season 8 in 2008 was simply horrible. From drinking Jack Daniels like it was Powerade, to throwing a glass at Shane Prim to throwing furniture into the swimming pool, Browning is easily the worst tough character ever. Soon after his buddy, Shane Nelson, lost to Efrain Escudero in the elimination round, Browning jumped inside the cage to confront the victor. The two ultimately fought in the semifinals, where Escudero eliminated him. Browning's troubles with alcoholism and anger management continued even after his elimination from Tough. In 2009, he was arrested for ingesting 16 pills of an anti-anxiety drug, had an absolute meltdown in the hospital, and even attacked a male nurse. In 2011, he had a run-in with the Thai Mafia and police and had to flee Thailand to avoid getting killed. Number 3. Chris Lieben While Chris Lieben wasn't as bad as Junie Browning, he was still pretty bad. Lieben took part in the inaugural season of The Ultimate Fighter and produced one of the worst moments in the show's history when he peed on Jason Thacker's bed as a prank. He wasn't always the hammer, however. Sometimes. He was the nail, too. During episode 5 of the season, Lieben exchanged heated words with Bobby Southworth, and things quickly got personal between the two. Southworth crossed the line by calling Lieben a fatherless bastard, after which Lieben was physically restrained from accosting Southworth. Moments later, he began sobbing and proceeded to sleep outside. Southworth didn't stop there, however, as he teamed up with Josh Koscheck to spray a sleeping Lieben with a hose. Infuriated with the prank, Lieben smashed a door with his fists, and Dana White had to set up a match between Lieben and Koscheck so that they could settle their differences. Lieben lost by unanimous decision thanks to Koscheck's wrestling. Number 2. Julian Lane If you've been following mixed martial arts for a considerable amount of time, you must have come across the let me bang bro meme numerous times. The person behind that legendary meme is Julian Lane, an MMA and bare knuckle brawler who rose to fame in the 16th season of The Ultimate Fighter in 2012. A few drinks and miscommunication led to a fiery clash between Lane and his housemate Dom Waters. Lane wanted to bang waters there and then 
but the two were restrained by their fellows as the war of words continued. Being unable to fight Waters, Lane had an emotional outburst where he ended up crying and uttering the goaded phrase, Let me bang, bro! Michael Hill, who was keeping a hold of Lane, assured him that he will get a chance to bang, but only when the time was right. Lane's phrase went viral within days, and the moment has been memefied since then. The trolls would soon sympathize with Lane after he lost to Bristol Mirande and got eliminated. After his defeat, Lane was shown crying in the locker room while explaining how he wanted to make a better life for his family and how he had nothing left for him after his loss. Night Train eventually returned to the Ultimate Fighter Season 5, much more composed than the last time around. And although he failed to win Tough 25 as well, he was commended for keeping his composure despite being targeted by his detractors. And the number one spot goes to Jesse Taylor. Jesse Taylor is hands down the craziest person to have ever graced the Ultimate Fighter sets, and he did so on two different occasions. Taylor first took part in the Ultimate Fighter 7 in 2008. Back then, he was young, stupid, and starved for attention. So, he did some absolutely ridiculous things to make it work for himself. Taylor was already doing his talking inside the ring, winning all fights he took part in. But it was his unnecessary antics outside that ultimately led to his downfall. In an attempt to entertain himself, his housemates, and the audience, Taylor peed himself multiple times on national television. But that was still okay with the UFC. What wasn't okay was him messing up big time ahead of the finals. Days before the finale, Taylor went on a drunken rampage, kicking out the window of a rented limousine, frightening female patrons at the hotel he was staying in, and yelling about being a UFC fighter. When Dana White came to know about it, he fired Taylor on national television, telling him to go home, get his life together, and call the UFC president in a few months. It took nine years for Dana White to give Jesse Taylor another chance at the Ultimate Fighter 25. Now older and wiser, Taylor kept his behavior in check and beat everyone in his path to win the tournament. But unfortunately, he was kicked out once again after failing a drug test. In between his two stints in the UFC, Taylor competed across the globe, including Russia, where he was almost killed by Vladimir Putin's bodyguards for trying to hug the Russian president. With that, we have come to the end of our video on the craziest and most memorable personalities from The Ultimate Fighter. Who's your favorite? Give us your thoughts in the comments section below. If you liked our video, please show us some love by subscribing to our our channel and turning on the notifications so we keep bringing you stories like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.